Yes, everybody, welcome back to Five. My name is Stephen Alston. That's Rio Ferdinand. That's Joel Bayer. And today joining us, we've got Fabrizio Romano. Welcome. Hello, guys. Yes. Thank you for the invitation. The Brand new, new signing. The new signing. <laughs> so here we go. We can say finally. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> finally. Big pleasure oh, really to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. Super pleasure and happy to talk football with you. And transfers, of course. Cool. Normally, we talk very heavy on the Premier League, don't we? On Vibe with Five, we some people will call it a United and Arsenal podcast, and they probably have a point <laughs> to be honest, right? We talk a lot on United and Arsenal, but we thought we'd have a look at what's going on. Champions League's just started to kick into gear. Let's get someone who's got a bit more of a, a finger on the pulse what's going on around Europe, and who better than Fabrizio Romano? Welcome, my mate. Thank you, really. It's a, it's a fantastic pleasure. I'm really happy to talk football with you. And uh, really, I'm really curious to hear about your thoughts on, on many things about international football, as you mentioned. So, of course, Premier League football, but also about uh, telling you also something of some players here in Serie A sometimes, because they're really becoming interesting for, it, for English football. Look at what happened with Lautaro Martinez last summer with Tottenham or many other cases. So, Tommy Yasu for Arsenal, as you mentioned, for, for, for English football. So, many things to say. I'm really happy to be here with you. Fabrizio, before we start, I want to get to know you a little bit because I think all of the guys that watch this, they, they have their finger on the pulse as to what's going on in the game. We've been managed. We've managed to sign the most reliable source of information when it comes to transfers in the game in the last year or two, which is, which is you to, to you. sign with us. So um, we're delighted with that. That's a, a great, a great uh, feather in the cap for us. But how did you get to that point of, of where you are now, where people look to you? for information when it comes to transfers? Because normally it was agents, normally it was radio shows. It's you now. Thank you. First of all, thank you for the kind words. And coming from you is really important to me. And it's been a long process, to be honest. I started like 10 years ago to work in journalism in general. I'm 28. I started when I was 18. Uh, then I moved to Milano when I was 18. And I'm from Naples. I moved to Milano. And here in Milano, many agents are around the city, like in the hotels, in the restaurants, agents, directors, not just from Italian clubs, but I'm talking about important people in football in general, uh, top agents, uh, this kind of people. So I started to go around the city every single day during the window in the summer and in January, going around every single day for 12 hours or 11 hours, uh, talking with people, trying to receive some news, some update, but first of all, to establish some relationships. I think relationships are key in this kind of work. So to be always in good relationship, to, to start some friendship. For me, it's now important that some of my sources are my good friends. Uh, and this is something key if you don't want to get bored with this work after two or three years. So this is why I started, as I said, nine, eight years ago to go around the city, uh, to receive some updates from people around the city, to have some meetings with these people. And then I started to try to bring my news on social media because I think that the future, and I will think in the future is social media. People are not waiting for a TV show or for a paper in the morning to have the update. They want the update right now, in this mm -hmm. moment. And you know better than me. So this is why I was trying with social media, also because it was important for me to, to show people and to show these kind of agents, director, and people in football who I am, and what kind of work I'm doing. And this is how I started. And I'm just trying every single day to do, to do my best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so so stay stay in, in the hotels and and going to meet people and identifying the agents and stuff. Was that with a view at the time ten years ago to yes. doing what you're doing now and and being part of the conversation when it comes to transfers? Yes, I, to be honest with you, I was, not, I was not expecting this kind of situation for me. So in international way, because it was not was not possible to predict this kind of, of way for me. But I was absolutely looking forward to do something in transfers. Because first time I received the transfer news, uh, it was 10 years ago, when an agent called me, and I don't even know right now how he had my phone number. He called me, he was an <laughs> Italian guy from Barcelona, working in Barcelona in La Masia, and told me, I'm trying to bring Mauro Icardi, Barcelona B striker, to some Italian club. I'm trying to do this move transfer market was completely different 10 years ago. It was not like now. So it was easier also for agents to, to have some players, some young player in also an important club like Barcelona. And he told me, I want to try, I want to try. And I said, how I can help you? And he told me, try on your website to write something about Mauro Cardi as a player. So to describe this boy, he's not playing with Barcelona first team because Guardiola doesn't want him. So let's try with this one. I did this article. And Icardi, six months later, joined Sampdoria from Barcelona B uh, as free agent. And then he joined Inter. So my first big news was Mauro Icardi to Inter, thanks to this agent I helped when he was joining Sampdoria. And I still remember my feeling. 
when I broke my first <laughs> football card. I said it's better than commenting a football match for me. This is my personal feeling. So it was an incredible feeling to, to, to share this news. And this is why I wanted to do something in transfer. I immediately said I want to be around the city every single day to do something in transfer, to build some relationship and to try it to do an interesting job here in Italy. Then it started to be international because I said, why not trying also with other clubs and with other people? It's about the relationship and about the respect. If you respect people, you will receive respect back. And this was my, and this is my key every single day. Uh, my question is Fabrizio, now that you're such a key part of, you know, the culture and the conversation, <laughs> I've had agents trying to reach out to me they want you to break the news sometimes now, isn't it? Because they know that if they're on your radar, you can influence transfer. Would you say that's correct? Yes or no? Yes, it depends. It depends. I always say that I think it's correct, but it depends uh, how do you see transfers, in my opinion, and communication of transfer. I always say that if you're just looking to be accurate, and this is my big advantage, I, I don't need to sell any paper or I don't need to sell any show or these kind of things. Uh, I just share my news on social media. So I'm happy with this kind of mentality because I can just, just focus on being accurate. For me, the only priority is to be accurate. Of course, if you can be first in the news, it's, it's fantastic, but it's impossible to be always first also because we have many fantastic journalists doing this job. So uh, it's not possible to be always first, but to be always accurate has to be the mission, in my personal opinion, in my personal case. So I always say to people that are my sources, I want to bring something positive to the negotiation and not creating a problem. So tell me when we can say something. Uh, and we, are, we have to receive positive feedback on every side of the negotiation. So for me as a journalist, of course, but for the player, for the agent and for the club, if we share something accurate and something correct, no one is having problems. So it's about the timing. Agent or director have to be smart in understanding the right timing to share the news. Mm -hmm. But I think influencing has to be positive, always. Always with a positive feeling for all parties involved. So, so the actual the agent is is either the agent's going to call you or the club director or somebody at the club's going to call you and give you the information. This is like to be at the center of, and the heartbeat of this type of situation, and uh, it must be a great feeling for you, someone who obviously loves football. It depends. Yes, yes, yes. It, of course, I love this kind of feeling. Yes, but you know better than me. Uh, how the pressure sometimes is so high and it's directly from me it's not about followers or people following me because I think the biggest form of respect is being accurate always and telling people what is happening what is really happening then I can't control the transfers but it's only about sharing what is really happening right now but also in my personal feeling um, it is really good when you try to be respectful with people. I, sometimes it happens that people tell me, Fabrizio, this is happening, but you can't say in two days because it's not the right stage of the negotiation. So let's wait a bit. And then another journalist is breaking the news. But I'm not angry. I'm not angry because I think next time I will be first with, with this person if I'm respectful. So for me, the, the key is about being respectful. And yes, the feeling is positive, of course, because I love football. And so being part of this process is something really good. It's happening that agents are calling, sometimes are the club directors, sometimes are president. In different countries, we have presidents uh, directly involved in the negotiation. No? Sometimes here in Italy, for example, or in MLS, many presidents are working directly on the negotiation. And so this is helping sometimes to have some sources. It depends really country by country, player by player, situation by situation. But yes, many people are involved. And the biggest advantage and what I really like is that sometimes also casual people can help you in this process. If they know that you are working on transfers, as mm. is happening to me thanks to social media. Make an example. One of my former girlfriends, I, I was not talking with her since three or four years. She sent me a message in December last year. She told me, you know that. I can't, I can't mention the player and I can't mention the team, but she told me, I can mention the team, AC Milan. And she told me, a player is going to AC Milan from an important club. And I said, wow, uh, are you sure? And she told me, 100%. Don't ask me why, but I'm sure 100%. Okay, I'm going to check. I called the director and he told me, how are you knowing this news? It's impossible. It's only me, the agent and the player. How is possible? And I said, I can't say, I can't say. And then the player joined the Milan. And, you know, in general... Timori. Yeah. I think it's Timori. I can't, I can't say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't say they signed five players. Eh? So, so, um, so, so, so Fabrizio, what, what, the people want to know, what's been the biggest, the biggest transfer that you, you, you broke first in your career so far? It would have been Ronaldo, Rio, but you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Rio has been incredible, Ronaldo. No, for me, the... Uh, 
the biggest one I will never forget is Bruno Fernandes to my United in January, you know, because I spent the whole summer telling my United fans, texting me every single day, why Fabrizio in Portugal, they're saying it's done. Someone in England is saying Bruno is joining in summer, it's done. In August, he will join. And I was saying, no, no, he's not joining this summer. He's not joining this summer. There is no way to join this summer. And people were angry with me. Then on the 1st of September, they told me, okay, you were right. Uh, thank you for being accurate on this one. Then in January, when I received the message, Bruno deal is done, and I tweeted, here we go for Bruno, with the pick of Bruno, with his agent in the plane flying to Manchester. This pick was something incredible because Manchester United fans were getting crazy, and you know better than me. This feeling is something that for me was like scoring in a Champions League final. <laughs> <laughs> so I will never forget. Impossible to forget. Have you been burnt before where someone's told you some information and it turned out to be wrong? Ah, yes, of course. Uh, it, it, it's happening, it's happening. But when you start in, in this kind of job, it's something that is happening. Now they know how I work. So if they try to tell me something wrong, I, I check really one million times before sharing the news, any particular top news about top clubs or top players. So I'm checking with different sources always uh, before sharing anything. I also have, to be honest with you, sources that I know since long time, if they tell me something after one second, I know that it's 100% accurate because they're always helping me. So it depends case by case, but yes, sometimes they're trying. They're trying. For example, this, this summer happened to me with some players, with rumors, with Inter, many people telling me one thing, but the feeling I had was, sometimes, uh, this is why I, I love to be here with you, because knowing football, for a journalist that is working on transfer, is something really important. i make you an example. We had many rumors here in Italy about Hector Bellerin for Inter as a Kimi replacement. And many people telling about this one. And I said, a part of what people say and what people tell me about this move, so sources involved in the negotiation, what I think is, if you look at some football and if you look at Hector Bellerin, how he's playing, it's impossible he can play in a 3-5-2 system, in my personal opinion. Good player, but not for a 3-5-2 system after his last season with, Ar with Arsenal. Impossible. Or you are crazy if you sign Bellerin for this kind of system. I'm not discussing the player. It's about mm -hmm. the system. Akimi was running every single time. He's a completely different player from Bellerin as right back. So I was, th I was thinking, in my personal opinion, if you think with your head, it's impossible. And then he didn't join Inter. So sometimes... Using your mind and understanding of football is something really important to understand also about transfers. Hmm. Wow. That is, that is great stuff. Listen, go on, Steve. Go on, carry on, mate. So we, I, I wanted to ask, I think these guys want to ask about, do we think Manchester United are going to get that final piece of the jigsaw? But we'll touch on that in a sec. I want to know how Mourinho is getting on in Italy. Hmm. Very good, to be honest. Very good. Jose is doing very good. The, the atmosphere, the feeling with the city and with the fans is fantastic. So Roma fans love Mourinho. They were needing this kind of manager. The city is incredible. They, have, they are passionate. They, they really love this kind of situation with a manager like Jose. Uh, in the derby... Even if, with they Lazio, lost, even, if, even if they lost, that's not, that's not going to cause any no, issues? No, 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 no. At the is moment, no. Okay? Also because, no, no, no. Also because they were good in the derby, I think. Okay, Lazio, Lazio had been better than Roma in some, in some situation, but Roma were good. Roma were good and they were really close to, to have a draw. So I think that is not changing the relationship between Mourinho and Roma. Uh, he was also so angry as always with the ref. So, you know, that sometimes Mourinho is doing Mourinho things as always also here in Italy. But the atmosphere is really good. I think he will need some time to have also players on transfer market that he really needs. He wanted Granit Xhaka from Arsenal. It was really close. Then they had Spinazzola injury. Then they were needing a left back. And so they spent money on left back and they lost on Granit Xhaka. But he was really close to join, to join Roma. They are needing this kind of player, a leader mm -hmm. in the midfield. He's missing this kind of player. He's missing, in my opinion, another winger because maybe El Sharawi is not at top level for Roma. Mm -hmm. And they need something different on the transfer market. He always said, we need some time to have the real Roma of Mourinho. But I think the impact is really good with the city, with the club. And Tammy Abraham is doing great, doing great. And this is something directly from Mourinho. He wanted him 100% and he's doing so great, so, so well. So this is why the feeling around Mourinho is absolutely positive. That's, I like to hear that about Tammy as well, one of our young players going, going abroad. Um, just moving on to what Steve was just mentioning there about Man United. Everyone's talking about a defensive midfielder. Um, we know the names in England that people are talking about, like Declan Rice. Um, what other names have been banded about around Europe for that potential role maybe um, in the coming transfer window for Man United? 
I will keep an eye on two other players. Of course, Declan Rice, I think, is the biggest name for United, as you mentioned, because he's the perfect player maybe for this position. So it's about the money, but as kind of player, he's the perfect player, and they're scouting him since long time. They wanted him also uh, last summer, so he's always been in the radar, as for Chelsea, also for Man United. But I would mention other two names. First of all, they had Camavinga and Saul in the list last summer before they joined Chelsea and, uh, and Real Madrid. Uh, now I'll keep an eye on Ruben Neves also. He's a player they were considering. One is Ruben Neves and the other one is Chouameni from Monaco. He's a player also in Chelsea list. So I think mm-hmm. Chouameni and Declan Rice are two players that both Man United and Chelsea are looking for this position. And maybe something will happen. I don't know if it will be January or, or summer, but for sure they are looking for this position. Mm. I'd, love, I'd love Ruben Neves. I think Ruben Neves at United is a really good fit. You'd like Ruben Neves before Declan Rice? Did I stutter? <laughs> this, is, this is a good question. Eh? This is a good question. I think the first position is Declan Rice. Let me say in the list for Man United, the first position is Declan Rice. Uh, mm-hmm. Ruben Neves was an opportunity also during the summer, but when they had the chance of signing Ronaldo, they said, "Okay, let's go with the striker, and then we will see mm-hmm. the coming months for the for the midfielder." But Dec- uh, sorry, Ruben Neves was a name for for United this summer, also because the price is completely different. Uh, for mm-hmm. Declan Rice, you need maybe 90 million, 85, 90 mm-hmm. million for for Declan Rice. For Ruben Neves, I think with 35, 40 million, maybe you can sign the play. So why yeah. would you? So why would United go for Rice then? I mean, obviously, I, I can understand maybe they're trying to build the English core, but 90 mil, that's that's a lot of money where you can go get someone for half the half the amount and maybe not the same amount of the ability, but Almost the same. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Let's see what will be the price, I think, at the end of the season, maybe. Because you know how in football things change. Uh, Look at Jadon Sancho. The price one year ago was 120. And then they signed him for 85. So sometimes things are changing. Will not be easy with with West Ham. And because the player is always... Yeah, they're playing well now. Yeah, Yeah. they're playing so well. They're playing so well. So it will not be so easy. But yes, I agree with you. The price will will be a point. Let's see what will be the strategy from Man United in the summer. So if they want to go with central midfielder as the real priority after signing Ronaldo and Sancho and Varane, three different top players in three different positions, maybe they can say, okay, we spent big money on this position because we need a leader for the present and future. English player like the Rice would be maybe the perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Fab, what's the um, reputation of Mino Raiola like in Italy? Because he doesn't have a great reputation in England. To be honest with you, it's the same. Is the same here in Italy, in particular for what happened with AC Milan and Donnarumma, you know, because AC Milan fans were really angry with him for Donnarumma to, to leave the club as free agent. He was growing up with us since he was 14 or, five, or 15 and then started for AC Milan for many years, captain of AC Milan. He always said, I want to play the Champions League with AC Milan. They are in the Champions League now and the player left on, on free. And so they were really surprised after negotiating and negotiating with Mino Raiola for many months, then they lost on, on Donnarumma. So the reputation around Raiola is not so good. But I think that this is something of part of Mino Raiola as a person and as a public agent. So he likes these kind of things. He likes to, to, to fight sometime with the club if he's not trusting the project. He always said that he was not trusting the project of AC Milan and he wanted to bring Donnarumma to, to Paris. And this is what he wanted. I think sometimes we talk about Mino Raiola as a devil, but many times for the club, he's an angel, you know? Hmm. <laughs> just just mo- moving on from someone like Mino, I, I think the, tell the people as well what the effect in terms of the interaction, the people reaching out to you when a big transfer is going ahead and it's starting to gather pace. Like, for instance, Cristiano Ronaldo, is your yes. phone going crazy for the whole that 24 hours, 48 hours? Or run us through how that works for you. Has been really crazy. Uh, I think also more than Messi, maybe as an impact, because we had Man City and Man wow. United involved. So Messi was incredible too, maybe the same level. But with Cristiano, the reaction from the fan base was something really incredible because they were not expecting it. You you know better than me, Rio. So you are the only one hoping for this one for uh, for for Cristiano and saying about Cristiano and Man United. But the fan base. For three days, they were really suffering the situation with Cristiano Ronaldo. I was receiving messages saying, Fabrizio, please say something for Man United. We are praying because he can't go to Manchester City. They were desperate for the situation. And then when I started to, to report about this, this Cristiano story for Man United, and then everything was sent to Orge Mendes, the contrast, so everything was going to become real in the afternoon of this. I think it was a, 
Thursday, I still remember, with Cristiano joining, uh, joining United. The, the, the atmosphere around this move was something incredible. For me, it's about the pressure, you know, because I want to be always accurate because, you know, sometimes people think that I, I feel like a king or a star or a celebrity. It's not like this. I just feel as a journalist. I wake up in the morning and my mission is to be correct and to be accurate. So it's, it's not so easy. People think that people are calling me and stop and it's so easy. It's not like this. You have to be always accurate or in three days you will lose all the power you have. So I always try to do my best as a journalist and not as a star or this kind of things. I don't like it. Really. Love it. All right. I think we call it a day there. Cheers to Fabrizio for joining us today. Uh, this is a new show that we are putting out on five. The name is Gazetta della Five. We will dive into what's going on in the Champions League and around the rest of Europe. Uh, but cheers for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. Obviously, go check out Fabrizio's work if you're unfamiliar. I don't know where you've been if you are. Uh, and keep it locked to five. We'll see you in a bit. Later. Great signing. Great yeah. signing. Great new signing. It's one of the signings of the season so far. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Fantastic pleasure to be with you and see you next week.